Well, it does seem to be turning into a sort of Anna Cerebilis, doesn't it, uh, for the royal families. They're on a lot of front pages again for lots of reasons this morning, including the shock death of Prince and Princess Michael of Kent's son-in-law. Prince William, of course, mysteriously missed a memorial service for his late godfather by, with only minutes to spare yesterday. And uh, obviously we've seen the pictures of uh, Prince Andrew leading other royals into St George's Chapel, and that's brought a, a lot of condemnation. Mm -hmm. A lot of newspapers are saying he simply shouldn't have been there. Yeah, that's the front of the mirror this morning. Prince still doesn't get it. Mm. And today, Harry will learn if he's won a High Court challenge against the government regarding his personal security when visiting the UK. Joining us now, the royal editor of ITV News, Chris Shipp, and the author and historian, Dr Tessa Dunlop. Good morning to morning, you both. Beth. Morning. morning. Where do you want to start? Well, <laughs> it's a big list. Uh, <laughs> let's, ask you that. let's start firstly, actually, with Prince Harry yeah. in the High Court. Do yes. we have any idea whether he's going to get his um, security publicly funded or not. Well, he's had a lot of um, success in the courts recently, but that's mm. against um, newspapers. Um, this is an entirely different case. It's against the Home Office and whether or not he should have security when he's here. And it'll all be down to whether the judge believes that this committee called RAVIC, and I forget what that means, but it's the committee that decides who, what, what royal gets what protection, mm. um, whether or not they took the right decision uh, and, and whether they were, they were right to take his security away from him when he's in London and in the UK. He, um, uh, I'm just looking at the comments that I've received this morning, Tessa, because I believe he absolutely should. He's still a member of the <coughs> royal family, might not be a working royal, but he is the son of the king. If anything happened to him, God forbid, we'd wonder why we hadn't properly protected him. We know what happened to his mum when she yeah. lost her royal security. And the nature of our system, hereditary monarchy, once a prince, always a prince, mm. whether you are a working royal or not. And it's interesting, because Ravik also oversee VIPs, including politicians, and, of course, at the moment, there's a big mm. shuffle about which politicians need yes. protection. And at the moment, I think, under the spotlight, three female MPs. Not because they're anywhere near the government or the executive, but actually because of their needs, because uh, they are more deemed to be more in danger. And, actually, I think it was Di Davis, who was a big royal protection officer for over two decades, mm -hmm. he said, in that time, not one minor royal, to his knowledge, had had a, a credible threat against them. Mm. And Harry and Meghan, according to the MI5, et cetera, did have several credible threats against them. And we know, and, uh, including the MPs in question, and Harry and Meghan, driven by these culture wars, there are now unsafe spaces, unsafe people. Mm -hmm. And I think that, in many respects, this isn't about whether you approve of the Sussexes or not, it's about whether we want them to feel safe in our country mm -hmm. because of Harry's birthright. All right. Well, let's, let's move on to, to William. Um, pretty much unprecedented no-show yesterday. Yeah. Um, pulled pull out of this memorial service with literally barely minutes to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's unprecedented, as I say. What do we think is going on there? He, he simply <laughs> talked about personal reasons. But yeah, what, good what, question. What all, all they would say was personal matters, so we went back and said, is it because of Kate? You know, we, she's been... Uh, she's still recuperating from her abdominal surgery. Uh, and the answer we got back was she continued to do well, but they didn't say it wasn't to do with Kate. Um, mm. So that's that's entirely possible. And as you say, to pull out 45 minutes before the event, when you were meant to be giving a reading, when it was for someone who was your godfather, as uh, the former King of Greece was, uh, to William, and you live closer than everybody else. I mean, we had the King of Spain who made it from Spain. Away. We had uh, a bunch of um, Jordanians came over, Serbians um, and the Dutch and, and all the rest of it. And William lives in Windsor and still didn't make it. Um, and and what that's why there were so many questions, but so few answers. Well, what yesterday. do you think about that, Tessa? That, that they haven't given... He hasn't given any, any hint as to what the reason was, which has, of course, resulted in frantic speculation. Well, oh, he that. gave a very strong hint. He said it was personal. Yeah. Well, I know you feel really strongly about this, Susanna. Yeah. But, but, but an awful number of... of a, lot, a lot of our viewers, rather, have been in touch today saying, we want yeah. to know, or well, we want at least to be reassured. And then the other question was, perhaps it was because of the... A sudden death of, of Tom Kingston, who, incidentally, whose parents-in-law were at... Um, Prince and Prince the, the, the Palace Memorial did rule that out last service. night, that and it they was did, nothing yeah, to do with it. But... They ruled that out. But... I do think, and I don't want to take a pop at a man when he's down, and anyone who's got a spouse who's, uh, you know, had a major operation, mm. you know, the, the, it was a gloves-off moment. But I do think if you pull the lens back a bit, you'll remember those years of work, I will, etc. We got through them... Um, they're an incredibly impressive couple, greater than the sum of their parts, particularly when it comes to William. 
But one of the key problems is with the departure of the Sussexes, and I think as humans, we all need this. We all need someone to push off, to compete with in a healthy way. You remove any kind of competition. And at the same time, the predominantly right-wing press have pushed William and Kate up on this incredible, untouchable pedestal. Mm -hmm. So really, I think, to an extent, understandably, he pretty much feels he can do what he like. We've, we've, wow. we've made him untouchable in some respects. That's, That's a really interesting point. You see, um, my feeling is just sometimes, <laughs> no matter how prof high profile you are, <clears throat> there are going to be things you don't want to discuss yeah. with ITV News' Chris well, Chip. How <laughs> could you not? Uh, that well, you'd, <laughs> look, I would discuss anything yeah. with you, Chris, yeah. but I'd want it to stay private. And some... I just think sometimes the royal family, you know, let, they're under a lot of pressure. There might be some medical things that you've got you don't want to Kate, share with the world, exactly. of course. And, you know, we've been told that Kate's got abdominal surgery. We haven't been told any more than that, by no. the way, so we don't know the, the, the full but detail. What, do you feel they have a duty to tell you more? I think it's entirely their personal choice, like it was the King's choice to share that he was having a prostate operation, and that's led to many good things, as we know. But if and they don't share, then they have, to live well. with the, they have to live with the yeah. fact that there is going to be speculation. Yeah, but I mean, look, because but the King has shared so much, everyone now expects the royal family to kind of share everything, um, and perhaps that was part of the problem yesterday. 30 seconds left. Um, Mirror speaks for quite a lot of people this morning in condemning Prince Andrew's decision to go very publicly to the memorial service that, that William missed yesterday. Um, a, a lot of abuse. What, what do you reckon? Look... He was at the Christmas service at Sandringham, as he was the year before. He does go to events now, although he's not a working royal. And he, but, I mean, I think the, probably the, the biggest problem yesterday is that he looked so happy to be there. Um, yes. And I think that, grinning, that, that, and that's the picture you've got on the front of the paper. And can you, you blame him? Andrew, the one that won't flush. And the longer <laughs> William stays away, those camera lenses are going to go for Andrew, because that's where the story is. Yeah. The one that won't flush. Now, that's the sentence that'll live me for the rest of the day. Um, Chris okay. and Tessa, thank you both thank you. very thank much you both. indeed. All right, it's um, 8.44.